Let's look at some more examples of this project. So this student's starting off with a great background. You can see how they've collaged and then they've painted around that collage. When you're painting around the collage, make sure that you paint over what you've collaged and not try to just paint this rectangle in. That adds these really nice textures here and it allows the inside to look incredibly interesting when everything is kind of cut off and they've created this design around it. So think about the overall abstract design. Here is my example. You can see I have all these interesting things going on inside, but I've simply cut off each one of the things that I've glued down. You can't see anything that was just glued down. So this is a great start again. And then here we see some drizzle effect going on with the background. It's another example of a background. And then here's the last one. You can see in all of these, they had really large designs. You can see here in this student that they are, that they have cut off the things that they've glued down and they've created an overall design. And then they have their 3D person right in the middle. It's nice and large, so it kind of makes sense. Um, you can see how they have added the cardboard to the back of it and allows it to float. That makes it look nice and interesting. Here's another one. You can see how they've made the frog float and then they've glued on these different things. These different things do look simply glued down and this rectangle here in the background looks just kind of glued down as well. It doesn't look like it's integrated into the painting. However, I feel like this piece still works. Now, if we look at this one though, we can see how they have painted around these trees allowing that collage to poke through as the color of the trees. And I feel like this is a perfect example of what I was looking for. You can see here how everything inside these trees are incredibly interesting. So instead of painting these trees like a green and a brown trunk, they have this really interesting design going on inside the trees. They have cut out from watercolor paper, their butterflies, which gives them a really unique look and then they've also folded them up so that they are floating off of the page. And then this tree here, they cut out of another abstract design, but instead of, instead of just laying down a shape or something, they've cut out this tree shape. And you can see that the abstract design really leans itself into this artwork. And it looks like this whole artwork fits and works well together. Something that's hard to do is make all of the colors in these artworks work together. And I feel like that's what this student did well at. They All the colors really seem to work well together. And I feel like this one did as well. To where some of these artworks, you'll notice that the colors aren't really going well together. You might have some muted colors with some really bright, sharp colors. And so be thinking about that as well. I'm gonna show you one more that I feel like a student did well with the colors. They've put this red oil pastel apple against this red and these nice muted oranges. And I feel like overall, it just looks interesting. Okay, I wanna show you some different examples of what's possible. So this person simply painted over this wild abstract background. They painted over kind of a ground or a table, and then they painted in this ball, but allowing some of these colors to peek through. And then they painted a dog on top. This doesn't look completely finished, but they did glue on this um, paint that was peeled up, that was dried. And so it kind of gives this interesting look to it. Still feels like it needs just a little something more, but this is a really nice piece. Here's a student that took this in a very different direction. Um, the floating element of theirs are these trees, but they took several different papers that were similar in color. And then they cut out these clouds and cut out this, uh, these trees and they glued it down on their, on their plain air painting that they had. Um, you can see the road here. They've cut out all of, these, um, all of this grass here. They've cut it out of an abstract piece of art. And so you can really see how it does work well together. It's harder than you think to do something like this. All of the colors need to go well together. Um, it doesn't need to be something that's starkly different as if they would have used these colors here on this piece. You can see how it would not have worked. But this is working really nice. And so that's an option that you might consider. Here's a student that took a chalk pastel piece, cut it out, glued it down onto their abstract background. And you can see how that works.
Here's another student that's taken this, um, this a different direction and they've, what they have designed is a cat and they've painted everything on the outside of the cat, but then they put several layers of paint in different grays on the outside of the cat, allowing the inside of the cat to be that abstract background just peeking through and then they've glued on this correction here, but that really adds to it. Okay, here was my example. I had taken um, cardboard and just spray painted it gold, cut out a circle, cut out these shapes. I have glued um, tissue paper to the back of this so that the light shines through. Um, this were some keys that I cut out of a magazine. You can see my abstract background in the back. Added these white pieces of paper here to really um, make the thing pop. So, and then here's one more of my examples, but this is something that's possible. You could take something, um, I drew this woman completely, and then this is my wife, I drew her completely in this abstract way, and then I took it to the big cutter and I cut it up into strips, and I took away every other strip and glued this down, and it gives this really interesting effect. Each one of these is floating, and so be thinking about that. Here's another one. Um, these are each dried up glue pieces that were peeled off of our palettes. And then these are gum wrappers. And then of course, this artwork here is floating. And you can see here behind me that this is a, a piece of laminate paper that has a design on it. And so you can see how that was glued to the back like that. So. Here's a different way that you could take this project. This was our oil pastel project, our favorite cup. And we had taken that and I floated it. And then we have ink dripping here, abstract backgrounds. But the, I, the thing I wanna show you about this is it has a big overall design. It has something big here, has a couple stripes and then another stripe here. And the overall design is one big abstract flowing piece that works well together. Okay, two more. We look at this one. It was an artwork. You can see the abstract background peeking through here and here. They have some plastic on this to make it kind of shiny. You can see on the back, they've glued several patches where they have cut away from this piece. And then of course they cut out the, uh, the astronaut and then floated him and glued a black piece of paper behind it. And um, then took him and scooted him over a little bit. So that now looks like his shadow. Um, so that's an interesting way of doing that. The same thing was done with this one. They took the background and they liked the background. So they cut out this bomb shape. They lifted it and floated it with cardboard and then they scooted it over. They glued black paper to the back of the paper where the hole was. And now we have what looks like a shadow underneath it and then they put words and paint on top of this so that it says nuke. Okay, I think those are some good ideas. Um, be thinking about how you could create this and make it your own original idea. What could you add to it? Remember the things on top need to be original. The thing that's emphasized needs to be original. So be considering how you might do that in your own artwork.